Hello everybody, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we are going to be doing this inverted boutique bow. Um, look at how beautiful this is. But I am going to show you how to use this really, really beautiful rhinestone ribbon that I got off of Amazon. As you can see, that is the whole collection of ribbon that I got. I will link all of that below. Um, I think these are really pretty winter bows, but not Christmas per se, which is why I am making them and I will show you guys how to do this. So to start off, you're gonna need the normal, you're gonna need your needle and thread, you're gonna need scissors, lighter. You are going to need two pieces of 13 inch long, one and a half inch grow grain. This one again is that really pretty rhinestone that you can see back there. And you will also need two pieces of the uh, another type of one and a half inch grow grain. This one is a solid. So as you can see, we have the rhinestone on the outside, solid on the inside. This tutorial, I'm going to show it to you in blue because blue just shows up better on camera. Um, I have two pieces here, one of each of the one and a half inch grow grain because I already have two of these pieces clipped and ready to go. You are also going to need three pieces of six inch long grow grain. Um, however you want to do the pattern for your spikes, as you can see, I went with two of the rhinestone, one of the solid. You're going to need the clip of your choice. I prefer to use uh, French barrettes for this. You're also going to need three eighths inch ribbon to wrap the clip and the center. And I also use one of these ribbon sliders. I will link that below as well. So I'm going to quickly show you guys how to do one of these loops and one of these sides of the bow. It's really important to make sure that your ribbon is lined up not only here, but here as well. You don't want it to be off center. Um, oh, I also forgot you're gonna need some straight pins to pin these pieces together while you are sewing. So you're gonna take the first one, overlap it just a little bit and pin it together. That will hold it in place so that you can do the next step, which you're going to take the ends, bring them around the back of it so the inside ribbon is on top, and you want that nice flat piece right there. Make sure your loops are even. You're also going to want to make sure that when you do both pieces, the um, loops match. So let me grab that really quick. See, as you can see, this bottom part overlaps the top one, so it matches. Once you are happy with the evenness and everything matching, you're going to pin the other sides together. Just like that. And at that point, I make sure that these are all even. I pull that one out and then repin it to this side. Makes it easier when I'm sewing over to know where the pin is. And again, just double check, make sure your loops are all going the same way. They are, I am really happy with that. So we are going to start sewing up. You want to start from the bottom and go through the top 
down. And then it's just up and down throughout the entire side. The pins help keep this all together so you can focus on sewing as opposed to Oops, sorry. You can focus on sewing as opposed to um, holding everything together. All right. <laughs> I made the same mistake again. You want the last stitch to come up. So this is why I do a running stitch so that I can back up my stitches if need be. Like that to correct my mistake. And I leave my mistakes edited in for you guys so you can see what I do wrong so that you know if you make the same mistake, you can correct it fairly easily. All right, and there we go. First side done. See, you come down through the top when you start and you come up through the top when you finish each side. If you've been here a while, you know I perpetually have a very long string on my needle and thread. Um, and if you're curious as to what thread I use, I know I say this every time, but the Co Coates and Clark upholstery thread is definitely the way to go. Now you're going to start off on the other side again. You're going to make sure that they line up. Before you do that, though, you probably should take out the pins. Because <laughs> once you sew up, they're going to be stuck in there. So you're going to start, you're going to come down on the top. And again, just like the other side, weave it in and out. Do a running stitch. This is where the doll needles are really helpful because you have a nice long needle that you can do this. And just weave in and out. There you go. Pull the needles out. All right, now we have the two sides sewn up, as you can see. Two sides are sewn up. Now what I do is I pull that knot from where we initially started out a little bit. And then I grab both the piece with the knot and the other side and just give a little pull so you can cinch just like that. And then while holding it tight, or at least attempting to, you're going to want to tie it off. Do one knot to start off with because if it loosens up while you're doing all of this, you can just pull it tight like that. And then you're going to knot one more time just to secure. Just like that. You're going to trim off any excess. Move that piece off. Let me quick re-knot my ribbon, um, not my ribbon, my thread, because we have to do the spikes. And I'm also going to collect the straight pins. 
so that I don't forget about them and then they wind up stabbing me later. Honest, the honest guys, if I hadn't done that previously, I wouldn't be saying that, but I have. So. Bowmaker problems. <laughs> all right, so I have all three of these spikes put together like that. I have a uh, jumbo salon clip holding it together, but what I'm going to do is take it off. And then you're going to run your needle up through the center. Hopefully you guys can see this. I didn't realize it looks like there's a glare on my end, but I'm hoping that is not the case on your end. I'm going to bring the needle up through the center. I don't do a whole lot of stitching on my spikes. I found I don't need to if I do it this way. So bring the, the needle up through, pull it completely through, wrap it around once, and then you're going to lay, oops, let me move my camera just a little bit. You're going to lay your spikes down flat. My tripod does not like being tilted. There we go. I'm gonna lay your spikes down flat. This is very important to have them down flat. You're gonna put a finger on either side of where the thread is. So just like that. And then you are going to pull tight. It gives you a nice cinch without having to do a whole lot of stitching. And then just wrap it around a couple more times just to secure it. Don't worry if they look clumped up, we will fix this, I promise. And then you're gonna come around to the back. I usually use a nail to hold down the thread And as you can see, I don't have a whole lot of nails, so you don't need really long nails to do that. i wrap the thread around the needle a couple of times. And then pull through until it cinches. This is why the upholstery thread is really good because you can yank on that. I don't know if you can see how tight that's pulling on my fingers, but you can really yank on this and it doesn't snap. It's a little pricier than standard thread, but it is really worth it in my opinion. But no worries if you can't afford it, it, it is a little, it is a little expensive. Um, I think I also forgot to mention you're going to need a glue gun. <laughs> but you should know as bow makers, you are probably going to need a glue gun at some point during your journey. And then what I do is I just glue the spikes together, but fanned out and separated just a little bit. Uh, this is totally an unnecessary step. You don't need to glue your spikes together like this. I find that my bow looks better in the long run if I do because the spikes stay in the same position that I want them to be in. So again, just fan them out, separate them ever so slightly. Make sure they're even. And what I do is I just run a line of glue like that. It almost looks like a wishbone. And then I finish off the spikes. So spikes are done. And the bow is like the inverted boutique bow portion of it is done. You can 
fuss with it until you get it just perfect. Um, sometimes it comes out just perfect the first time around. Sometimes I gotta fuss with it just a little bit. But once you're done, stack that with the other bow and put it off to the side. You're going to line your French barrette now. I take this piece out and I don't take my three eighths off of the roll. Just run three eighths up through the center. Move the camera. Run the three eighths up through the center of the back and then up the center through the front of it. And then you want a little bit overhanging, just enough to cover those three holes there. Just run some glue there. This initially holds everything down so that you can continue to glue. Press and hold for just a minute to make sure that it has adhered. You might get some glue leakage, just peel that off and move on with it. And then what I do is I pull the ribbon up so you have a little loop there, but it allows you to run glue on the French barrette. And then I just pull it back tight and run my finger along the inside to make sure that the ribbon adheres to the French barrette. Just like that. Put a dollop of glue there. And then you're gonna run another line along the top. Bring that ribbon across. There you go. Pinch it just to make sure it adheres. At this point, clip off the excess heat seal where you clipped. It's very important to heat seal so that you don't get the ribbon that frays because it will fray, trust me. Ugh. Hot glue strings. <laughs> Pretty sure everybody knows how much of a menace they are. Now, with this covered, run just a line of hot glue along the top of the French bread. Take the spikes and press down onto the French bread. And then I'll flip it over and just make sure everything adheres fully. If like me, you mess up and you have some glue right there, just take your lighter, heat it up and peel it away. It may take a couple tries, especially if you're not trying to burn a hole in your ribbon. <laughs> I've done that too, honestly. Um, if you guys are interested in hearing some of my bow making horror stories, please comment below and I will do a whole story time video on that because I have got some horror stories in bow making for sure. All right. Uh, what I do is now I take that center wrap ribbon. It's easier to do it before you put the inverted bow onto it. And I thread the ribbon through the slider. You know, pull that back farther than you think it's going to be, much farther, because it will be out of your way. Run just a line of glue across that three eighths. You're gonna find the center. You can see where the center is by where the um, spikes are. And you're just gonna glue that down on the inside it's easier to do it now because you can pinch with just the spikes 
and I make sure it holds it down there. And then run a line of glue and take the inverted bow, make sure to line it up, press down and also press in, make sure that the center closes up. So you're going to press down and press in. Don't worry if it didn't completely close up. It's perfectly fine. This is really good. You can have a small gap. And then what I do is I take that 3 8 ribbon and I wrap it around the center. Make sure to slide that slider up and position it in the middle where you want it. And then I pull the three eighths as tight as I can manage it. Again, use your nail to hold it still. And then drop a dollop of glue in the center. Press down firm. Cut off the excess and heat seal. At this point, you can just pull all of the hot glue strings that you might have off. And again, fidget with the inverted bow, get it the way you want it. Sometimes it smushes during the, you know, during the process of assembling it. And it's just a matter of reshaping just a little bit. There you go, that's it. At this point, you can take that um, bar that you took out. What I do is I feed it through the front first, just like that. Rest it on the back there. Sometimes it's a little hard to pull up and try to force into here. So the trick I found is if you rest it on the back here and then close it slowly it pops its way back down into there. Close it up. And this bow is ready for stiffening. I, I really wholeheartedly recommend you stiffen this bow so that it maintains the nice loopy shape that you have going on. Um, I'm not sure what stiffener you guys use, um, but if you're going to ask me what I use, I will tell you that I use um, Alien Stiff and Quick. Bring this up just a little bit. This is what I use. This is by far the best stiffener for bows. Hands down over hairspray. It lasts longer. Um, hairspray might be cheap and quick, but if you're looking at keeping the life of, you know, the, the lifetime of stiffness, Stiff and Quick is by far the best. So, Lay this down on your towel or whatever you stiffen and spray it really good. Let it dry. And then your little one has the perfect blingy rhinestone holiday bow. Again, I will link the um, two lots of this rhinestone ribbon that I got. Um, this stuff was one lot. This, These two stacks were the other lot. So I will link those down below. Um, the only difference is, is the one lot has um, clear rhinestones on it. You know, these, these two stacks have clear rhinestones, Oop. as you can see, or white, whatever you want to call it. And this lot has rainbow colors on it. That's really the only difference, plus obviously the difference in colors. So um, I will be filming another tutorial, hopefully tomorrow where I will be doing a gingerbread or ginger girl or you know gingerbread man or gingerbread girl whatever you want to call it this one's a girl she's got the little bow on the top but I will be doing a gingerbread man for my next tutorial so make sure you tune in for that I apologize for how long it's been since I've uploaded I've had some health problems and trying to work through them has been a huge problem um, mostly I tore I have a partial tear to my MCL 
that happened a couple of months ago, and I've just been going through physical therapy and trying to heal from that. So I do apologize. I will get back to a semi-regular uploading schedule, I promise. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you have not subscribed, please feel free to click the subscribe button somewhere around there. Also, like this video. It really helps me get boosted in the algorithm. Um, and I will see you for another tutorial soon. Bye!